okay, nausea and vomiting uh, and um, constipation diarrhea, that's what we're going to talk about in this uh, PowerPoint. Um, so you can look up what's going on with uh, nausea and vomiting. Uh, some of the things that we need to assess, um, you know, the causes, you know, what's what's causing it, and, you know, is it another medication? Um, is it something that uh, disease process that's going on? Um, you know, is it causing uh, other problems? Um, Sores in the mouth, malabsorption, uh, altering the hydration status, altering the electro light status. Uh, we want to know onset duration, frequency, you know, all of those things. Um, because if possible, we want to remove the cause of the nausea and vomiting. Um, sometimes we can't. Uh, we have to let it run its course, uh, you know, if it's a virus. Um, or in the case of chemotherapy, uh, you know, it's one of the things that patients have to suffer through and we can try to treat it um, as best we can. There's several different classes of uh, antiemetics and then we'll talk about most of them. Uh, antiemetics typically can, can be given by numerous routes. They can be given to go. Um, not always the most effective. Um, there's a type one of the meds that can be given uh, under the tongue or uh, as an oral disintegrating dot or tablet. Um, it can be given IM, IV, or suppositories. Um, so the route will depend on the severity of the patient's uh, nausea and vomiting. Dopamine antagonists, this includes uh, prochlorperazine or, or compazine. Um, they inhibit dopamine receptors that are part of the vomiting center, uh, typically used for um, severe nausea and vomiting. Uh, promethazine is another. Um, dopamine antagonist, uh, commonly known as Finnergan. Uh, note, I said Finnergan, not Finnegren. Uh, very common mistake. And, um, one of my uh, few pet peeves. Um, the problem with dopamine antagonists is that it is also going to affect dopamine receptors in other parts of the brain brain, uh, so we're going to see uh, extrapyramidal symptoms um, of dystonia, Parkinsonism, dark tardive dyskinesia. So certainly um, use over a long period of time would need to be observed uh, for that. Both of these are medications that can be given PO, IM, or IV, or rectally. Uh, rectal route is quickly absorbed and useful if patient doesn't have um, an IV uh, or and they're not able to keep anything down. Adver side effects and adverse effects are dose related. Uh, they do have anticholinergic effects, so we're going to see dry mouth, risk of constipation, tachycardia, and then of course the EPS symptoms. If it's taken at a high dose or a prolonged period of time. Now it does have some central nervous system depressing effects. Most people feel sedated um, during, you know, when taking uh, Finnegan or uh, Compazine. Um, so they should avoid other CNS depressants. Uh, antacids and antidiarrheals are going to inhibit the absorption of prochlorperazine or promethazine, the dopamine antagonist. So it should be separated or avoided.
serotonin antagonist um, on, on, on Dancitron, uh, sounds like a transformer, uh, or Zofran. Now, Zofran, uh, this is the one that comes in an oral disintegrating dot or tablet, um, ODT, or it can be given IV. Mm. Sorry, hang on. Uh, it obviously uh, does what its name implies. It blocks serotonin receptors. Uh, used for chemo-induced nausea. Uh, but we can also use it for post-op nausea. Um, in, any nausea, but uh, it seems to be more effective for chemo-induced nausea than some of the other medications that are available. It has no dopaminergic blockade, so we're not going to see the uh, extra uh symptoms. We do want to assess baseline central nervous system because sedation can be uh, a side effect along with diarrhea uh, and constipation. For chemo, uh, it's often given prophylactically and then for several several days uh, after. Uh, for other uses, it can be given uh, after the onset. Anticholinergics, including uh, antihistamines, um, can be used for nausea and vomiting as well. Um, not the only thing you can get over the counter uh, are typically some type of antihistamine, uh, and it's their anticholinergic effects that is going to um, give them the nausea and vomiting uh, reduction. Um, they typically are used for motion sickness, uh, nausea that's not related to chemo. Um, you know, just the usual everyday. Uh, upset stomach uh, can benefit from uh, anticholinergics, including antihistamines. All right. You probably noticed that there were some others listed in the uh, PowerPoint in your packet, but uh, really you can kind of skim over the over those. We're not going to really test over. So constipation and diarrhea. Um, Again, you can look at the causes uh, of those. Constipation can have a dietary uh, cause. Uh, diarrhea, like a cough, is a symptom of some underlying problem and needs to be investigated. Uh, and it's something that we may not always want to treat um, because it's the way that the body gets rid of toxins uh, and so um, we have to consider that uh, carefully. So a good history will help us decide um, whether treatment is necessary uh, or not. Assessing um, fluid and electrolyte balance, uh, that sort of thing, uh, prior to making a suggestion about treatment. So treatment for constipation is, is uh, you know, obviously we start with diet, uh, increased fluid, uh, increased fiber, fresh fruits, vegetables, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but sometimes it's just gone too far and uh, we have to just use medication or a laxative. Uh, so laxatives um, are cathartic. Uh, cathartic is a related term. It implies a strong and complete balancing. I always find that a little bit humorous because you hear people say, um, you know, something happened and they're, they're like, that was cathartic. And you just want to ask them, well, did you shit your pants? Um, because uh, that's what catharsis, uh, cathartic means uh, to me. Uh, so maybe you don't think that's as funny as I do, but I always have to chuckle. Um, Laxatives typically have few side effects if they're taken appropriately and can be used for multiple reasons. Typically we think of them as, as 
treating or preventing constipation, uh, but we sometimes will use them uh, to prevent straining and bearing down. Uh, this can be following surgery, um, it can be following an MI, and we don't want patients to strain to have a bowel movement. Uh, we can use it to cleanse the bowel prior to surgery or diagnostic procedures uh, as well. The lacidus um, usually come in uh, about four classes. Um, they can be bulk forming. Um, bulk forming means they absorb water uh, into the feces, which um, increases the bulk of the feces and puts pressure on the bowel, uh, causing an increase in peristalsis. Um, patients who benefit from bulk forming laxatives uh, will include patients who are incapacitated, uh, such as a quadriplegic, uh, patients with cerebral palsy, uh, Alzheimer's, especially late stage Alzheimer's. Uh, disease. Um, so if they need somebody that needs a regular laxative because they don't, don't have good muscle tone or are not very active, um, could benefit from bulk forming. Uh, patients with irritable bowel syndrome can have softer stools, which would be less irritating. And in certain diarrheas, uh, bulk forming laxative can absorb the irritants helping to move it out of the GI uh, tract. The side effects of bulk forming laxatives, uh, such as cilium, um, include obstruction, especially if taken without adequate fluid. So we want to make sure that patients are taking uh, their bulk forming laxative with at least eight ounces of fluid uh, at the time that they take it, and then followed by another eight ounces shortly after. Now stimulant and um, saline osmotic um, are, are very similar. A stimulant actually irritates the bowel. Not only it pulls water into the fecal mass, but it also irritates the bowel to increase peristalsis. Um, same way that a saline or osmotic um, laxative would work. So the more water that's retained in the in the fecal mass, uh, the the easier it's going to um, slip through. Um, stimulant and saline or osmotic uh, laxatives typically are used for acute constipation and may be used in large doses for bowel prep. Side effects obviously are abdominal discomfort. If we're increasing peristalsis, then abdominal cramping uh, and spasms um, just stands to reason. Uh, we could also cause the patient to have diarrhea. And chronic use of stimulant and osmotic laxatives can cause the loss of normal bowel function uh, with a reliance on the laxative to have a bowel movement at all. Um, stool softeners, uh, surfactants, um, bring water and fat into the stool, but they don't change the bulk of the stool, so they don't stimulate peristalsis. They just make the stool softer and easier to pass. Uh, so stool softeners are typically uh, used to um, prevent constipation and straining. Again, be useful for the uh, vaginal delivery uh, who has hemorrhoids or um, a large laceration or episiotomy. Uh, the MI patient, who we don't, again, we don't want them to strain, um, you know, patients like that. Lubricant laxatives uh, lubricate the intestinal wall. 
uh, again, they soften the stool without increasing peristalsis. So, um, the person can stool without straining. So, um, the bulk forming, the stimulant, and the saline can cause a person to have a stool. Uh, the stool softeners and lubricant laxatives simply make it easier, but they don't stimulate um, defecation, is what I'm trying to say. Now, anti-diarrheals obviously are the opposite of laxatives. Uh, here, we're trying to stop uh, a stool. Um, Typically, they can be locally acting or systemically acting. Um, so if they're locally acting, they're, they're going to work just in the GI tract. And if they're systemically acting, they typically are going to work somewhere in the central nervous system. Um, Antidiarrheals typically are used um, if, for sudden onset diarrhea uh, that's lasted several days. We've seen significant fluid loss or there's some type of uh, inflammation. Um, but, you know, if, if it's bad diarrhea, but again, we want to make sure that um, we want to make sure that there's nothing that says the patient needs to have that diarrhea to prevent uh, from getting worse. What I was trying to say. Uh, so um, obviously we have non-opioid, non-opioid, and opioid antidiarrheals. The non-opioid uh, are like uh, bismuth subsalicylate, which is Pepto, um, that binds and absorbs uh, the toxins. Um, psyllium and pectin preparations can absorb the liquids, and these would be like our bulk forming laxatives that in this case would um, absorb the fluid so that we're not having the fluid loss, but would also absorb the toxins so that uh, it's not staying in the system. They're not necessarily going to slow down peristalsis, but <clears throat> um, certainly make the patient a little more comfortable with, with firmer stools. Uh, we can also use intestinal flora modifiers. Um, this will be important if the uh, problem is related to uh, over you know, long-term use of antibiotics or uh, by something that has um, some reason, a, a, oh, I can't think of what I want to say. Um, the introduction of uh, something that's irritated. Um, can't think of anything else off my head. Uh, so sometimes just having a patient eat yogurt with active cultures um, because that restores normal flora or taking the live uh, culture tablets can be helpful. Now, um, the opioid antidiarrheals uh, include diphenoxylate with atropine or lamogal and uh, loperamide. Loperamide you can get over the counter. Um, lamogal uh, has atropine added to prevent overuse um, so that these people tend to not like the side effects uh, related to the atropine. Um, both slow peristalsis. Uh, they're not a large enough dose or the right kind of opioid to have analgesic properties. So they slow peristalsis and relax smooth muscles and so they can reduce abdominal cramping and discomfort um, and reduce the diarrhea. Um, 
they can cause dizziness and drowsiness, uh, dry mouth. Um, high doses, we might see uh, anticholinergic effects of the atropine, so more drowsiness, dry mouth, tachycardia. Uh, the opioid antidiarrheals tend to be more effective than the non-opioid uh, antidiarrheals. Okay, so that's it for GI. Uh, on to endocrine. That's your next step. Thanks for listening.